Well, so we've just arrived. Uh, the first thing is there's no secretary here because the clubhouse is closed at the moment while I have a new carpet fitted. So they've got the good old honesty box, which I love. It's £10 to pay nine holes, £20 to pay 18. And I've got no cash on me. So I've recorded this as a witness statement that I promised to call back, I think on Friday when they reopen and pay my dues. It's on camera. Oh, hi there. Yeah, I played the uh, golf last week on the course. Um, I think it was on Wednesday or Thursday. And the court, your clubhouse was closed and I wasn't able to pay because I didn't have any cash on me. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to call up. Uh, we'll have to come back again. But I, I owe you, I owe you £10 anyway for my, uh, my 9 holes. So can I pay by card? I'll tell you what, what, what if I, what if I call, shall I agree to call in at some point and pay you the £10 that I owe? Until then, I'll have to remain on the bad debt list. Anyway, today's video comes from another golf course, as you've probably just heard in that phone call, from Port Maddock. And they have got some interesting personal, maybe, golf test, club testing to do. But I reckon uh, you'll all sympathise or resonate with this situation. Okay, so today's video is really simple. I have got, well, there's a couple of irons that I've been thinking about changing to. The current irons I've got in the bag have been around for, well, I think it was October 19. So two and a half years and the thing is i know in my heart of hearts that there's nothing wrong with the current irons that i've got but there are some differences in the potential new irons that i'm looking at the question is is it worth me changing Right, so let me explain the situation first of all. I tell you what, let me explain where we are, which is the, uh, we're just walking up the 12th fairway on uh, Port Maddox. The backdrop is absolutely stunning and you won't find a better tea location anywhere in the world. Anyway, that aside, what am I here for? Those of you who watch the channel avidly will know that I've had the same set of irons, which are the PXG 0311 P irons. And I've had them in for two and a half years. I've got steel fiber shaft in them. I got fitted for them. I really like the irons and like I said, that's like the feel, I like the sound, the performance has been good, very steady and consistent irons, so why change and? Well I think that's more of a question for all of us. And before I go any further, what I want to know is, when you decide to change something in your bag, what is the main driving force, what's the factor? Because I find that I may be only changing because these are two and a half years old, they're a little bruised and battered, I've seen something that's a little bit new and shiny, and that might be the main reason I'm changing. And surely that's got to be wrong. But I want to know from you, how often do you change your gear and why do you change it? So before I hit this tee shot with a potential new iron, I just want to talk about the PXG 0311s. And that's the fact that what I like about them, they've got a little bit of meat on them. Um, until I put them up against these irons in the bag, I've got two half sets right now. Uh, I didn't realise how bulky they were in comparison to this other model. Um, but like I said, they've a bit, there's nothing wrong with them. But this new iron, which I'm about to reveal very shortly, is it's better looking. It's a bit more compact. It's again a forged iron, which you know is a major deal to me. And it is from Mizuno. And it is, at the top end of the bag at least, the 225s. I've been blown away by just how good these things are. And like I said, the more I've played with them, the more I've put them in head-to-head -head videos in recent weeks, the more I keep sort of getting back to them and thinking I want them in the bag. But I wouldn't go with them all the way. I wouldn't go all 225s. Anyway, this 13th tee box is, uh, well, it's pretty spectacular where we're stored, as I've already said. Let's see if we can hit a decent shot with this five iron. That's a solid strike. I have no idea on yardage. I think we should be all right. Got 
Got a chance, got a chance, got a chance. Oh, 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 oh wow. That'd have been some birdie, wouldn't it? So that was a five iron, that was a long iron in the bag. And the interesting thing there is um, perhaps looking at these in terms of their profile, you might be a little bit fearful in terms of the 225s. Because they have slimmed them massively down for them uh, MP20 HMBs, and, uh, but they're still just as forgiving, but in a much more compact profile. And that's the thing that keeps drawing me to them. They're still very, very playable, but that smaller compact head. And that's the big difference between my current irons and this potential swap. But is that enough of a reason? That's solid, that, you know. That is right down the middle. That's another five iron. Bang straight, loving that, feel fantastic. Wow. So the main reason the video is trying to understand the logic of why we change clubs right now and what is our uh, driving force, like I said on the previous clip. We know drivers are maxed out in terms of yardage. They may be getting a little bit more forgiving, who knows? And then you look at irons and you think, well, why should I be swapping right now? Really do I want to damage my pocket and spend a fair sum of money to swap when in reality is there anything wrong with what i've currently got so i'm still undecided i'd love your opinion actually you'll see some performance um, of both clubs and i'll give you my feedback and i reckon there won't be much difference in between them the only thing will be down to aesthetics that surely isn't enough to change irons that's another nice clean clip off the top the yard is right yeah, a little bit down the left, you can see that zipping back as well. I don't know whether they've got that on the other camera, it's a little bit left to target, but the reason I hit that shot is this is a gap wedge. And you'll notice it's a different model because one of the things that is also appealing to me is mixing this set up. If you remember for the original reviews, the 223 irons, when they get down the shorter end of the bag, I think it's from seven iron, possibly eight iron into the shorter wedges, they become um, a fully forge club much like the 221s and for me the change in the feel was significant so what i'm thinking is if it did go down this route i would play perhaps five iron being the longest iron in the bag to seven iron so five six seven in the 225s and from then on in i would go down the 223s and like i said the performance out of these is fantastic the feel is um, that much better as well than 225 it's like a pure forged iron the only thing i don't like is that I just wish they looked the same as the 225s because the 225s and the 221s, they look identical and then we've got this different shape going on and I just wish they all looked the same because it would blend the bag so much better visually. But that's just me. Okay, so that was a four iron with my uh, 0311. Just leaked it out a little bit. And the one thing I'm noticing, I've got five iron in the um, in the 225s, four iron is the longest iron I've brought out in the 0311s. And I am noticing that the 225 is just that little bit softer, you know, which is a big positive for me. It's a big ass to it, the green. This is a really little, little gap. You ready? Oh, that's a golf shot. Happy with that one. What a golf hole this is as well. What a gorgeous day. So one of the big considerations for me is the size and the profile. I just thought I'd show you this because it's quite surprising. I've got a wedge here and I've got the nine iron. And you can see that's a sole width. I'll show you some from the top line in a minute or two. But the overall profile did surprise me, to be honest with you. Because don't forget that 225 is still considered to be that sort of player's distance iron. So again... Uh, I can't believe how much he thinned it down from the previous uh, MP20 HMBs. And again, that's the seven iron sole width. And just take a look at them. So, so different. So much more neat. And it's almost like, for me, the, the almost like the dream club, if you like. It's that blade-like club in terms of its profile. But so much easier to play. So much more forgiving than the traditional blade, the 221. And that's the dilemma. And uh, the other fact is, although I love the way the PXG clubs look, as you well know, very unique in their look and styling, that Mizuno is pretty special, isn't it? Hey, 
this is a real tough one for me like i said they uh i've become attached to these irons like i said i've played uh, played some decent stuff over the last couple of years of them and it is going to be a difficult one for me to part with them because i always get worried about making a switch i'm always dubious it's funny because i'll switch driver i'll switch fairway woods i'll switch putter like i'm changing my undies but the irons I don't know, I just get so familiar with them. And, uh, oh, I'm really torn as to what to do, honestly. I, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, caught between uh, two minds, really. There's so much I love about the 225-223 mix, but then am I gonna regret it in a few months' time and wish that I just, uh, that old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Right, sit down ball. Oh, that is literally pin eye again. And do you know what the biggest dilemma that's thrown in coming out on the course, and that's why I like on-course testing is trying clubs separately, you don't recognize, I don't think you recognize the differences as much. Bringing this, that was a 223 gap wedge again. And you start to, I'm really drawn towards these 223s because of that feel, definitely in that short end of the bag. It in the gap wedge, which is the only iron I've brought out, is so, so different than the feel. It's so much softer than that of both the PXG 0311 and of the 225. So this is the one for me now. It's without doubt, these would have been, or will be, if I go down the route, will be in the bag at that lower end. That's the definite. And then the 225's mixed in some way. But so good, the feeling out of these things. A big swing on this. Come on, birdie. Swing. Wow, I told you it was a big swing. Didn't hit it hard enough. Ah, annoyed. That's a five iron to finish. Again, decent enough strike, maybe off the bottom a little bit, but I think I'm done as far as uh, my testing, my own personal testing. And um, I think it's just a personal dilemma as to whether or not I want to part with the money for the small differences that I've seen. And those small differences are mainly aesthetically, maybe that little bit of softer feel um, in and around that short end of the bag, which I sort of miss a little bit from the blades that I played in the past. So that could be the deciding and contributing factor. But like I said, this video all along is when I was driving down here, I thought, well, why do we as golfers change clubs as often as we do? Because realistically, how much gain are we actually seeing? So I wanna know what are you considering changing this year and what are the reasons that you might be changing? Is it purely to put a new toy in the bag or is there a genuine reason why you think you might gain some improvement? Anyway, as ever, thanks for watching. We've been down here at Port Maddock Golf Club. Hopefully we've shown you a little bit of that as well. Our off course stuff, myself and Anna have been doing stuff a little bit earlier this morning on the beach here at um, Port Maddock. I'm about to go into the town as well. If you want to see some of that, you're going to have to switch over to our other channel, which I'll put a link in the description and you can find us there. And I really would appreciate it if you'd go and have a look at that stuff as well. Right, as ever, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.